Hello everyone, my name is Caroline Jackman and I work for the Crafts Council and we're here today to speak with ceramicist Carolyn Tripp about our new international toolkit and how she's used it for her business. But before we go into that, I would like to introduce you to Carolyn and let her explain a little bit more about her, her business. Over to you. Hello, Caroline. Thank you. Um, so I'm a ceramicist. I've been um, working with clay for nearly 30 years, um, but it's only really in the last five or six years that I found uh, the work that has enabled me to turn my practice into a proper business and be sustainable um, and growing. Um, I throw uh, in porcelain on the wheel and I make a series of bottles, vases, uh, interesting shapes. And I decorate them in my signature style using blue and white ceramics sort of transfer. Um, so they're very reminiscent of history, but when you look up close, the wording and imagery and, and everything on them is very modern and very much about me and my thoughts and, uh, 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 you know, basically, yeah, a little story of my life, if you like, on, on the pot. So that's what I do. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, as I know that you've uh, been using the toolkit, which we launched just over a month ago. So tell us how you've used it so far and what impact has it made? Mm -hmm. So um, probably I'll go back to sort of uh, pre-lockdown because pre-lockdown I was only selling at craft fairs and open studios. And um, <clears throat> during lockdown, obviously we, we had online and that's what we had. And I noticed, uh, well, my business sort of basically grew and I noticed uh, that I was beginning to sell overseas. Uh, probably about 30% of all my sales were coming from overseas. And then Brexit hit and I decided I was too scared to sell um, to Europe um, in particular. So I, I sort of stopped selling overseas for a while. And then more recently, um, using sort of as the information got clearer, I started selling directly to customers overseas again, but I hadn't been exporting. And one of the things I have discovered is that when you start selling overseas, maybe word of mouth, I don't know, but galleries and shops started to approach me, could I export to them? And I didn't really have a clue. And so very recently, using the uh, Craft Council Toolkit, I've been able to send some export orders out to both Europe and America, which is amazing. So I'm now exporting as well as selling uh, overseas, thanks to the toolkit. Fantastic. And, and tell us a little bit um, about the sorts of things that you found out, the processes that you've used with the, with the toolkit. Well, the first thing I think I'd, I'd say is that um, being prepared. So looking at the toolkit, it, the first thing it tells you is that this can take some time. So you need to be prepared. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Um, it's about communication. It's basically getting together a whole load of documents that you need um, to tick all the boxes that are required to export successfully without anything being held in customs or queried or costing more money therefore. And so the toolkit gives you all sorts of advice. So the first thing might be that you have to get your EORI number, which is specific to you, and it tells the customs people who is exporting. And you actually need that at both ends. So some of the people I've dealt with don't realise that. So you've sort of enc I've encouraged them to get their own number and then everything goes very, very swiftly. You also need um, to... With me, I, I make, every piece I make is different. It, it might all weigh something different. So each piece has to be documented. Both, um, I, I will take a photograph, I'll weigh it, I'll note the weight, the height, the dimensions, the price that I'm selling it for. It all has to be listed down. And um, that can come in the form of a packing list uh, or also it can double up as your invoice. So, so those things are very useful. And the other thing that needs to be on every single piece is everything has to have a tariff code. And there is a link to finding your tariff code, as there are, is for any of the government websites on the toolkit. So each piece of work, um, depending on what it's made of, what it's used for, will have its own six digit tariff code. And once you've got that, you've got it. You've got it for everything. So, again, that's something you can research ahead of time. 
Um, the other thing that, that was useful from the toolkit is, is finding that I needed a certificate of origin. Um, and this can be, you know, an artist statement too, or, or you could include both, but basically saying that the work originates in this country is made by me, um, it's original, uh, and that can again help. And, and there are countries out there that won't um, impose import duties if something is a piece of artwork. So depending you know, on the cost and whatever. So it's really useful to have all that information and the toolkit gives you that sort of tick list almost that you can go through and make sure that you've got everything. I you know, find that I'm packing and ticking off as I'm going along. The process goes hand in hand, but each time I've done it, it's become easier. I haven't had to find loads of new information um, because I've got it already. And it is, it's basically, as it says, a toolkit. Once you've got it, you've got it and you can use it for all sorts of things. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. And I think that's really interesting how you're um, communicating really clearly with your customer, the other side of what that customer needs and expects. And so therefore, I'm assuming everything goes really smoothly once you've got everything there and ready. Yeah, it, it is amazing, actually, because after all that paperwork and then sort of literally two days later, you see it on Instagram in their shop or and so, yes, that and it's only because you've done all that paperwork and done it correctly that that happens. I think, you know, the last thing you want is to send something out there and then have it held in customs because that doesn't make you look professional. Um, you know, having all this information makes you look incredibly um, like you know what you're doing. And, um, you know, and that has to be good in business, doesn't it? It has to be good when you're selling work. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you're a sole trader or in a really small group, you, you do need to become the master at everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully uh, other people will find this step by step guide, as you've described it, um, to sort of take take you through what you need to do. So on that, actually, what's the next step for you with using um, the toolkit for your business or, or just your business growth in general? I mean, what I'd like to do um, with regard to overseas sales, because clearly they're important. I mean, it's a, it's a massive world out there and lockdown showed me that there are people all over the world that like my work. So I have to find ways to get it to them. And um, one of the things I'd like to do is to either go to some trade fairs um, with the hope of getting some galleries um, or, in, or, you know, approaching galleries individually. And if I was going to do to go to a trade fair, I'd need to look at a different type of exporting, which is a sort of a temporary export where the work goes out and comes back again. Um, and there's a different set of rules. Again, it's all written down on the toolkit what you need to do. So I will go back to that, refer to that before I start applying for shows so I know what I'm into. Um, because there, yeah, there'll be some costs involved and whatever. But that's really what I want to do is, is take advantage of this global market, you know, don't let Brexit stop me from growing my business in the way that I always hoped I'd be able to. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I, I think we've got some real key takeaways there of, you know, that checklist, how the toolkit provides that checklist that you can go through step by step and setting aside time to make sure that you understand it and process it and apply it to your own business and good clear communication um, mm -hmm. and all of that will make exporting much smoother for you and your business to enable you as you described make the most of this global market yeah I mean it's a free toolkit you know why not get that toolkit and have it with your practice so that when you need it it's ready to go because inevitably someone will contact you and say can you send me this next week and you'll say yes I can because I've already got that toolkit ready Brilliant. Thank you so much, Carolyn, for your time and very best of luck with, you know, the future growth of your work. Thank you.